Okay, so miscellaneous stuff. Uh, basically, we have marking queens. Again, we want to have our queens marked. Various styles of queen cages. Making queen candy, I think, is an important skill. If you're going to be managing queens in any serious way, you need to have some candy available. A queen calendar to kind of keep you on track with the particular important dates of any uh, queen cycle you're uh, dealing with. Uh, Requeening existing colonies and incubators is kind of an optional thing. Uh, we can stop that uh, um, over too long. Just hit me when you not need time, okay? So uh, marking queens, I think we all understand there's different colors. I like to adhere to this. It's just been it was created for a reason. Uh, we're green this year, so get your green marking paints out. Um, marking tubes. Uh, I saw that uh, Ruth has one here. There's a couple different ones. You can't buy the nice one anymore. <laughs> it's hard to buy this one. I have one that's so old that my plunger has shrunk over time. And it falls up. I had to wrap duct tape around the base of it just to keep it in there. But it's this style right here. And uh, this, I don't like this because the, the, the thing you have to be really twitchy about how the paint goes through that. It's a fairly thick grid, and I don't like that. Have you seen the one-handed one, too? I haven't tried that yet. I, I saw it. It pretty good. But marking queens, uh, you should be able to do it without one of these, but I recommend starting here with your mated queen. We only mark mated queens. Put her in there. Gently move the plunger up to the top. You need to confine her. So uh, what I typically do is I'll, I'll kind of angle the plunger a little bit to put more pressure on the thorax region. I don't want to just smash this up in there like that so it's squishing her abdomen and her thorax. I'll try to wait till she's near the perimeter here and give a little more pressure right under her thorax. That'll pin her down, not put pressure on her abdomen, which is essential. Uh, that's where her ovaries are. You want to protect that. And then keep her steady. You don't want her squirming around because you don't want to paint her eyes. You want to get the dot right on the back of her thorax. And that's how I do it. Uh, I use pens exactly what Ruth bought. That's I why I brought it. I don't, right? I don't like it, but I saw that you, you like that like pen. It? I don't. I, I, I like this. Uh, so this is my preferred pen. It's an oil-based marker by Sharpie. Uh, you gotta shake the heck out of it, and you gotta pump it and prime it to get the paint to come up. Once you cut, once you get the paint flowing, you always be careful because you have to make sure that there's like no extra coming off. And then once you, I touch, you see my gloves; they're all full of paint spots. <laughs> I, I test my paint spots on my glove. Once I get the right amount, I'll take it. <coughs> That's how I do it. Um, so that's the one I use. These are the ones sold by Man Lake. I don't like that marker. Uh, I don't like it because I've lost so many marks on that. Nope. Certain colonies don't like their queen to have a mark and they'll scrape it off. I've never lost a mark with that. Uh, Michael Palmer uses this little tiny jars. It's super economical. A jar like this it doesn't go bad, it'll last years and years and years. Uh, it's just a little tester's model paint. The enamel paint lasts forever. I think he uses a toothpick too. Yeah, I have his video here. Um, Spot. There she is, right there. She 
she's gone back in there again, so. But, you know, it almost looks like there was two. So here's the queen, and this is how you pick her up, you see? You pick her up by her wings. Come up behind her and pick her up by her wings. And then to hold her, you let her stand right here. And then hold her like that. This is how you hold the queen. By the thorax, not by the abdomen. She's standing, but she's standing nicely. She's not going to hurt herself. And then to mark her, I use Testor's model paint and a little piece of a little piece of grass. You see, it's a little uh, piece of Timothy or something. And you just put a little tiny drop on the bottle, from the bottle on there, just a tiny drop. You shift your fingers over so you're holding her by the thorax. You just touch one little drop on there like that. Twirl off the rest of the paint so you don't have too much, and then move it around. And hold it for uh, hold it for 20 seconds till it dries. Then get a queen cage, and now you reverse the procedure. You pick her up by her wings. I'm getting used to these two. This one is this destroyed. Pick pick them up by pick her up by the wings. See, she reaches out to grab. You put her head in the in the cage, and you can pin her wings right here. She can't go anywhere because I got her wings pinned against the cage. And you just touch her, and in she goes. And then you pick up you pick up uh, seven or eight worker bees, same way by the wings. And you just put the bee in there like that and hold her, and then she'll go. <laughs> Two, three. <laughs> Four, those hands have been stung a lot. Five, <laughs> yeah. Six. Yeah, he actually said he was going to seven. better withdrawal because he wasn't getting stung. You got your seven bees and you got your queen. Seven bees and put a cork in the end. Right for your queen the number. So I can keep track of it. And there's your queen. Oh, look! I want to know what happened then. <laughs> because of what he did. Yeah. <laughs> okay, so that's how Michael Palmer catches his queen and marks his queens. Um, I've gone to his technique actually. It took me a while to get there, so I don't use the tube as much, but I, I recommend the tube. I think that's a, a really good way to start. Get used to handling queens. And putting workers in a cage, once you practice on drowns, grab them, <laughs> just pull, pull them off the frame, grab them by the wings, put them back down, and grab another one, pull them off, and then you'll work up to the workers. Pick up a worker by the wings. If you get her by the wings, and you can find her wings quite well, she can't reach around and sting you. And then, like you said, just get the head in the cage, and just tap her in the butt. Goes right in. What if her butt finds your finger first? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, <no. laughs> right? Queen cage. Lots, lots of different queen cage styles. There's more than that, of course. I mean, eBay's got all these things coming out of China, plastic cages and stuff. Um, I have a few here. Uh, this is a, it's called the Butler cage. Uh, basically, it's just eighth-inch screen cloth like this, wrapped around two plugs of wood. Uh, the bottom piece is stapled in, so that plug won't come off. This one uh, is got a little thumbtack there, so I can just pull that thumbtack and the top comes off, and so the queen will go in, and just set that between two frames, and that's how that goes. Uh, this is called the California mini cage. Um, it's augmented by these little plastic cylinders. You fill that with clean candy, and it goes in like that. So that's that's a nice cage. Uh, the nice thing about that, it easily fits down between two frames, right up on the, between the top bars. You don't even have to push it down inside the comb. Well, if you squeeze the frames tight together, it'll just stay right in the top bars. Jay Z BZ is one of my favorite queens for actually introducing queens. Um, Anything JZBZ, I think there's been a lot of effort in the design of the thing, and it works extremely well. So this cage right here, uh, basically 
and it's got a little hinge here. You close it like that, it'll snap, and then it's got this little trap door thing here. You can see this or not, but um, on the screen, there's a little so that the trap door right there, you push it over and that snaps down in place. You fill this outer tube with queen candy. And if you don't want to have bees give, give access to the bees with queen candy, there's little uh, caps. Uh, a bunch of them in here. They're little plastic uh, covers that you just put on top. It keeps the bees uh, from eating the candy. So you put the queen, you put the queen right in that hole. Same basic thing as Michael Palmer show, you just introduce her head in there and she goes in. Attendance, same way, this, this tube is filled with candy. And the nice thing about this is that there's a, a, a region here that has no access to the bees. So the queen can basically hide in here. So that's good and bad. It's good from the perspective that she's safe. Some colonies that you try to requeen, they're very agitated by the queen you give them. And they'll actually try to do harm to her. They'll bite at her feet, and that may not sound like much. The queens have glands on their feet that transfer pheromones. And when that gets injured or removed, that queen will be superseded early. So you want to have some sort of cage that gives the queen some hiding space. This is a good one. The California cage is deeper, so the queen can be conquered up uh, on the back side of this cage and not be exposed to biting bees on this side. Uh, there's another standard three hole. Probably everyone's seen that kind of cage. It's a, a decent cage too. Um, you, you have to actually frame. push that. Pardon me? Use that frame. This frame here? Mm -hmm. Yeah. You use this? I do. Okay. Yeah, so <clears throat> Christine just pointed out. It's a, it's a requeening frame. Um, you have one of these? Okay, so everyone knows these. Okay. So basically, three hole uh, queen cage. I, I built this one. Um, you basically remove the candy from one side, which faces towards the screen. And then there's a little access hole up here. That once the queen has been accepted a good number of days, she can wander around and eat her and be fed by the bees. Uh, I honestly don't use this anymore. But, um, now she's still protected in that right there, she's right? She's still protected. She, can, she doesn't have through. to be on the screen. She can be on the wood and not be touched. So it's good from that perspective. And uh, the bees will feed her through there. Uh, there's also candy in the back side of this thing, so she can go back in there and uh, get food if she needs to. But uh, I've used it in the past. I, I don't really use it that much anymore. My go-to cage on introducing clean is always a JZ BZ cage. It's just so, so super easy. Um, I think I have a, a slide later for this. So, caging the queen, Michael Palmer pretty much covered it. You always pick up queens if you're going to handle them by hand, always the wings. Okay, you pick them up off the comb with the wings, by the wings. You never really touch the queen's abdomen. That's where all her ovaries are, and that's off limits. Uh, holding her by the wings, you place her head into the opening, just like Michael Palmer showed you, release the wings. Uh, that's basically it, seven workers, uh, and that's it. Is now a good time for me to show what I do? Sure. Okay, so in huh? No. In your kit there, if you guys haven't already gotten it out, you have a queen clip. Looks like a hair clip that you can just snatch her off the frame. Because I'll tell you, when you first rear queens or are looking for queens, you don't want to grab your queen because you're going to squish her at least the first time. So I really don't pick them up by the wings. I've done it a couple times, but I'm just not comfortable with it. And I assume you're not going to be either. So this is a great way to cage your queen. And then I do use the marking tube, but trying to get the queen from here into here, I've lost them outside. So I've also gone to the point of, since I also raise monarch butterflies, I have these cages that act like a queen muff. And you can buy a queen muff from any of the supply stores, but this is a dual purpose thing. So you can have your, and I have a queen in here with her workers. So she's in here like this, and I just take this into the house, 
and I've got room to work so that I can let her go and then just catch her like this. So for you guys to get comfortable, find some way to do that because I can guarantee you, you're not gonna do the Michael Palmer thing unless you're Gary who's been working with bees for eons. So most of us are not like that. So I have these clean, uh, butterfly cages for sale if you want them, they're 10 bucks. Um, so it's a neat way to ease into it, you know, but do market cleans. Do you want me to show how to assemble the frames real quick? Um, so what we did here, I wanted to give you something easy to start with that wasn't a whole lot of money. You can go ahead and buy the uh, actual frames that Sean was showing, but this is just to get you started. So you separate the two. This is just the bottom bar that I've cut short, and there are two nails in here because most people, when you see them graft, they're going to graft with just this bar and the cups in there. So I wanted it something that was removable. I actually don't do that. I actually leave it attached like this because I'm only grafting five. I do it outside, and I just flip, 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 and get them back in the thing. But anyway, there's these two nails, and they go in this first slot right here. And you catch the nail on the, um, there's a staple in there so that it doesn't come off. So you can, if you want, you can tape that in, you can hot glue it in, the bees are gonna wax it in for you if you leave it in there any length of time anyway. And then you can actually pull this thing out, set your cups in there, do your graft, and then you bring it back and put it in there. And then you set the other nail, making sure to catch the screw and I have added a little bit of material there so it doesn't swivel so much but they do somewhat swivel but uh, once the bees get in there and they wax you know this together propolize or whatever it's going to sit there like this so this is a medium you can use it in deeps or mediums for starters you're only doing five to ten cells and you leave them all clumped right here don't spread them all the way out clump them all together this other piece that I've given you is um, a modification. It's part of the NECOT system, but I actually use this. I will very frequently cage my queen that I'm going to graft from or whatever, bring her inside so that the colony is queenless. And this is a great way to keep your queen for a while. There's this little cup here. I fill it with honey. And so then you get your queen and some workers in here, and it sits perfectly fine. It's nothing to see bees in my house all the time on these little things right here. Or they go in a colony like this. So this is just a modification of something that I'm using. Um, these queen cell protectors don't work with these pegged uh, system here. But I did see where somebody put this on here, took the cap, cut it off, drilled a hole in here, and then they do work. So then you can put that in there if you're trying to protect your queen cells, but you have to snip this cap off because you can't close it with a drawn queen cell. So this is just a little bonus thing for you guys. As you need to do, do something with your queen or something, it's a great way to um, have her somewhere where you don't have, she's inside the house or something like that. So. This has been mentioned earlier today, the pushing cage. Uh, that's how Michael Palmer requeens all his colonies of pushing cages. Uh, this is one of those areas where I, I differ a little bit from Michael. I, I found these to be a little cumbersome, but basically it's a, a screen cage, and there's um, side walls that are maybe three quarters of an inch high. And you have to push that into the brood. You put your queen underneath there, push the pushing cage, and get that cage pushed down all the way through any brood that's there to the what's called the midrib, the midpoint of the comb. And um, supposedly no bees can get in around that. <laughs> so that's the idea. Uh, he's obviously an expert at it. I'm not such an expert on that pushing cage. I find it. It's, it takes up a lot of space inside the thing, and I'm always afraid the thing's gonna fall off. So I kind of avoid these just because I've just messed up once and I've never shaken it off, honestly. So he pushes the cage around the queen cell or something? What does he do? Around the queen. Around so the queen. he introduces queens with that cage. So he, oh. has, he has a mated queen. He's trying to requeen a colony. He has lots of these pushing cages. 
he just pushes in over the, the mate at queen. There's no other bees in there. He chooses brood that's near ready to emerge. So when the brood emerges, they have no other queen than what's right on top of them. So they immediately accept her. And then she can start laying in the cells. How long does he keep the... Uh, the once she starts laying. So once she, his philosophy, uh, which was borrowed from Brother Adam's philosophy, is laying queens are always accepted. So that's the backbone of these pushing cages. Once you have a laying queen, the odds of it being accepted are super high. I thought you could take a laying queen from a hive and take the other hive's laying queen, remove one and put one in, in her place immediately. That, because that, that, that is Brother is Adam's um, yeah. statement, yes, but um, you can do that with your queen. I'll use some other measure. Okay. Um, I, I, I don't know what kind of magic he had, but uh, that's what he claimed would work. Said they smell okay, like they're well, that, That's they're what Michael Palmer is leveraging off on the pushing cage, but he doesn't do it as you suggest. He actually uses the pushing cage. Let's the queen get laying. Once she's laying, he opens the cage and all's well. They've got access to kill her too. Pardon me? They've got, the bees have access to sting her and kill her. She's In a pushing she's cage? Yeah. Mm, not really, because there's enough uh, clearance that the queen can walk through without being touched by the bees around her. Oh. Yeah, she's in the middle of that cage, she's away if they can't get that's, to That's it. correct, yes. <clears throat> Where did you bought that hardware cloth? Is that screening? Where did you buy that? Yeah. You can get that over the internet. Yeah, yeah. All it's called a number eight hardware cloth. That's what that's called. You can buy it at Ace Hardware. 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 So, Michael Palmer loves these settings. Um, if it's not fully pushed down, you know, if you haven't gotten it all the way to the midrib, all the way around the perimeter, there's a little gap, the bees can start digging under and they get access to the queen. So, uh, they're a little bulky. Um, they're, they're more fragile to carry around. We got a bunch of these things. If anything steps on them or pushes on them, then you have to manipulate them, get them kind of perpendicular again. It's just uh, not not for me. Uh, clean candy. Did you have something like clean candy? I brought some in. If brought some in. Okay, your... so this is making queen candy. If you're going to be, certainly if you're selling queens, you actually you absolutely have to have queen candy. Uh, if you're introducing queens to different colonies, made of queens, you need queen candy. So this is something you need to I think you need to learn how to make this. It's super simple. Powdered sugar, carol syrup. If you're making queens for your own apiary, never to leave your apiary, you can use honey to make your queen candy. Honey works a little better than the carol syrup, but this is what's legal, okay? It's not legal to use honey in place of the queen can for queen candy if you're selling queens. Why is that? That's just, American. we don't want any sort of distribution of spores, American spores. policy spores. Thank you, Sean. In other states, you have to be certified to sell queens. Is that true or not? You have to be inspected in the state inspected of Virginia. Yeah, yeah. Right? so they come, they come into your apiary and basically look at a sampling of your colonies. And on inspection, if you ever hear that your inspection is good for 12 months from the month that it's done, it is not in the state of Virginia. I talked to Keith two days ago, and he said it is good until December 31st, and you have to get re-inspected every year. So a lot of people have told me that it's good for 12-month cycle, but it's not. So good in Right, exactly. So to make this stuff, you take a half cup of powdered sugar, and Roughly a tablespoon of the carol syrup. You put it together and you start with a spoon and you start kind of mashing it all together. It's initially it's gonna look like it's not gonna pan out, but if you stay with it long enough, you'll incorporate the two together. When you know it's done, and the stuff no longer sticks to your fingers. At first your your fingers if you're not using a spoon or the spoon will be full of stuff. 
I almost always start using my fingers, and it'll be stuck to my fingers like glue. So you add, you start, it's worse, yeah, you want to get it to the point where it's Play-Doh. Mm -hmm. That's your kind of your target. Uh, so if it stays sticky forever and forever, you put a little more powdered sugar, and you finally get to the state where you can squeeze this stuff and it no longer sticks to your fingers. That's when you know it's basically done. It's going to be a, a good consistency. You know, it's not going to be watery at all. It's not going to stick to your fingers. Uh, there's some videos out there. Fat B-Man has a, a video on how to make uh, clean candy with this place. Is. Sean, see if that's your proper consistency and then pass it around if it is. Where do you have it? Right next to your flashlight. Oh. She just wants to see if it's going to stick to your fingers. It's definitely not going to stick to your fingers. It may be too dry. It's too dry. Yeah. It might tend to dry out. So I'll pass this around. If I would say that's too dry. So it's How about marshmallows? I heard marsh some people use marshmallows. get through it so quick. Exactly. It'll burn right through that marshmallow. And you want, you want three day, it's a, a good, proper, clean candy is basically a three day release. That's a good release rate. The marshmallows are about 12 hours. Yeah. We'll put the cup, the open. Fondant. 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 That you use to decorate cakes. Yeah. I've heard of it, of course, but I've, I've never used it for clean candy. Yeah. My only experience with clean candy is doing it this way. And I know doing it this way with a good, firm consistency is going to be a three-day release. Three, three days is plenty for a queen, but... Uh, you, you refrigerate the rest, or how do you... No, I don't refrigerate it at all. You I just, just put it in a Ziploc bag like... I have it a standard Ziploc bag like this, and I keep it in my truck. Okay. Yeah, that's it. Okay, thank you. So, this is a, a queen cow. You know, we talked about timing and dates and the importance of the 14 days. Uh, there's a website right here. Uh, this is a, a website that's been up for a very long time. It's a great little thing to use. You put in the date you want to graft, and it populates all the important dates. So it's super cool. You can print it out. Uh, you can, you know, have it for records. Uh, so this is a cool website. They only, it was like a year or two ago, they, they ran out of, they weren't maintaining it, and the current year wasn't posted. And now I see that they, they upped it to 2019, but they don't have 2020. So I'm a little anxious about not having any future dates here. But right now, it's working for 2019. Uh, I populated it based on grafting today. So graft day, larva, and the cell cups, and certain the clean with builder colony. It's a meta day today, the 26th. Uh, the queens, they use the term hatch, I don't like that. <laughs> But the queens emerge on Thursday, uh, February, or so, uh, Thursday, February 7th. So if we made queens today, we have queens running around on the 7th of February. So it's cool, and definitely I recommend using uh, the queen calendar. Now, this may be something you're not terribly interested in, but as someone who sells queens, this is really of interest to me because I have customers come to me and I hand them a queen and they promptly go home and kill it. And then they blame me because I sold a defective queen. So I'm going to go through just front. So you guys hear how I think you should do it. You can disregard this to say this guy's full of BS or whatever. But this is how I believe you should requeen a colony. One, make sure the colony is truly clean. That's, that seems like a no-brainer, but I can't tell you the number of phone calls like that. And Sean, I need a queen immediately. So what happened? Well, they just swarmed. Like, well, you may have a queen in there, or you, you're going to have a queen in there any moment. Uh, so beginners often mistake natural supersedure with being queenless. They won't see eggs, or they won't see young larvae. They say, I'm, I'm queenless. But then there's a, a properly emerged giant supersedure cell right in their brood chamber. And when they throw one of my high dollar queens in there, she's promptly dispatched. Uh, so make sure there's brood in the colony, too. Oftentimes they'll say, Sean, I have this colony, there's no brood in it, and they've been queenless for a month. Can I get one of your queens? No, I'm not going to sell you one of my queens when you're broodless. You make the colony 
You put Groot in the colony, call me in a few days, and we'll talk. You have, I've found the odds of requeening a Grootless colony are very low. My experience, you may have other experiences, but having brood, open brood in particular, the brood pheromones, that helps getting a queen uh, in a colony accepted. Uh, don't attempt to place a queen in a lane worker colony, so these kind of somewhat related here. Just popping a mated queen in a lane worker colony is probably not going to pan out for you. What do you do, merge those? Uh, I have so many colonies, I don't even horse around with them, man. I just <laughs> shake them out on the ground, move on. Which I'm putting a queen cell. I put, I put a queen in the lower one and put a queen um, excluder on top of it and then turn the upper one over where the original um, laying worker was and like you're reversing the entrances and as they were flying out and it actually worked out real well. I was surprised. Yeah, I've requeened them with cells. So cells are cheaper and I have reasonably good success with cells. Can you use a simple screen board with the little doors? No, on cells? No, on um, <laughs> requeening a laying worker colony, mm -hmm. I take a, another colony that has a queen to merge them. Uh, I put the laying worker colony on top uh, of okay. the one with the queen with the double screen board. They're flying out the back, yeah. and then the okay. other ones are flying in the front, and then the pheromone mixes for I leave it for like two, three weeks and then pull everything and put it together. Right, right, okay. Yeah, I generally just don't horse around with them. I mean, generally they're failing colonies anyway. By the time I see that they're laying worker, I just basically take frames around the yard and just shake them out and put those frames, those resources on a colony that can reutilize it. Oh, a month later, I have now resources to make a split and I get a clean right colony. Mm -hmm. That's how I do it. Lots of ways to get there. Um, find the old queen and remove her. If you're requeening an existing colony with its queen right, uh, it's best to leave the colony queenless for a few hours. Um, there was a beekeeper in Northern Virginia. He had some notoriety up there. His name was Billy Davis. He sent the pack away. He was a, a very knowledgeable old beekeeper, a really good guy. He came down to Hampton Roads. A long time ago, and he brought some queens down to me, and he gave me a demo in, in my yard on how to requeen. And I was struggling with requeening big colonies at that point. And he kind of walked me through some basic steps, and uh, I was quite amazed at the success. He introduced three queens, and I'm like, there's no way that one's going to work for sure. And every queen was accepted using his techniques. So and it was not terribly different than one about to talk about. Find the old queen, remove her, leave it queenless. He did it almost immediately. So he found the old queen, dispatched her, and he was 